For this problem, we have red clay bricks with a density of about 2,000 kilograms per cubic meter, and air has a density of 1 kilogram per cubic meter, which has the lowest mass of all these four possibilities. Well, to do this problem, we need to understand first that density is the mass divided by the volume, and this equation can be rewritten because it's a fraction that equals a number or a letter, you can always just put a number one underneath that thing there because then you have two fractions that equal each other. And you can always put anything um, over one. One doesn't change any values. And since you have two fractions that equal each other, it's true that their cross products are also equal. That's just a fact of equal fractions. So um, what we could do is rewrite this as density times volume actually equals mass times 1. and The times 1 doesn't really matter. So we've kind of got ourselves now an equation that we can use. It's an equation for mass. So let's use it. Mass is density times volume. And we can be sure that we're correct also because we could look at the units of density, which in this case here are kilograms per meters cubed, and multiply that by the units for volume, which in this case are just meters cubed. And you're like, well, so what? Why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this because if you multiply these units together, look what happens. This can be over one, and meters cancel, and you get kilograms. And that is the unit of mass. So we know that this equation is correct because we checked it by using unit analysis. So anyway, let's go ahead and use this equation. So we're going to find the mass of 2 cubic meters of bricks. To do that, we will multiply the density of the bricks, which is 2,000 kilograms per meter cubed, multiplied by the volume of bricks, 2 meters cubed. And again, remember, the meters are going to cancel out. We end up with 2,000 times 2, which is 4,000 kilograms. Now we can look at letter B and realize, you know, if you're taking a test, do it easier. They're both bricks. They have the same density, but this one you have twice as much. So instead of 4,000, you have 8,000 kilograms of mass. And for letter C, you have 6,000 meters cubed of air, but air's density is just 1. So you're going to be multiplying 1 times 6,000, and here 1 times 10,000. And in both of those cases, you just get, you know, this number, uh, 6,000 and 10,000 kilograms. So it's really asking which of these quantities of 4,000, 8,000, 6,000, and 10,000 is the smallest, and um, hopefully it's pretty clear that it's letter A. So even though it's bricks, it, um, it has less mass than a whole lot of air, a big volume of air. So that's number five. Let's move on to number six here. An athlete can run nine kilometers in one hour. And if the athlete runs at that same average speed for 30 minutes, how far does he or she travel? Well, to find the distance that somebody goes, you could use this equation, distance equals rate times time. And it's an easy way to remember it if you say dirt. See, it's kind of lame, but dirt. Distance equals rate times time. How far you go depends on how fast you go for how long. So how far does he or she go? Well, what is their rate? Nine kilometers in one hour is a rate because a rate is a amount per time. So we'd put nine kilometers in one hour Multiply it by the time, well, 30 minutes. We better change those minutes, though, to hours. So we have to think about that. 30 minutes, I mean, in 60 minutes, out of 60, how much of an hour is that? So um, that equals 0 0.5 hours. Okay, it's a half. 
you know, a half, half an hour. So anyway, uh, multiply this by 0 0.5 hours and you get your distance. So it's four and a half and the units are kilometers right here, letter C. Number seven, how much time is required for a bike to travel a distance of 100 meters at an average speed of two meters per second? Well, here it's going 100 meters. That's how far it's going. And it's doing this in little chunks of two meters every second. So it's wondering how many seconds will be needed if you have chunks of two. I mean, you could look at it this way and just realize you have to go 100 divided by 2, and that gives you 50. So you know your answer. Now, if you wanted to do it another way, you could use distance equals rate times time again. And distance is 100. The rate is 2. T, we don't know. It's an equation you can solve by dividing both sides by 2, and you get T equals 50 seconds. Either way is fine. Doesn't matter which way you choose, you know, as long as it works out. Okay, which of these represents the velocity of a moving object? Velocity is um, a rate, uh, sorry, this velocity is speed with direction. So you really need to have a, a direction added in here. By direction, we mean north, south, east, west, up, down. So here's a north, that's good, and here's a north. Speed, we just need meters per second, usually, for uh, science. So we're going to look at D. Meters per second, north. This is the speed, that's the direction. This It's not B because it doesn't have per seconds, meters per second. And it's not C because it doesn't have direction. It, you have to have a direction in there. So hope that helps. That was a couple problems from the star test.